So we've installed Home Assistant. Now we need to configure it. And to do that, we need a text editor. I'm going to use Notepad++. Here's how. Okay, so we've installed Home Assistant. That's great. And you may have opened up the web page and noticed that it's kind of bare. And that's because we need to configure it. And we'll do that. But we'll do that in the next video. This video, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go and set up a configuration management environment. In other words, a text editor. Because Home Assistant's configuration is entirely within text files. We could use Nano just like we've been using for configuration of our Raspberry Pis, but the configuration file, configuration.yaml, is going to get kind of big. Uh, so we want something that's a little bit easier. And we want to be able to open multiple versions of files and open the log file and see what's going on and things like that. And that becomes a little bit hard to manage within Nano. So there's a few ways to get around that. We could use WinSCP, which I think is still hard to manage. We could use Samba which is easier to manage. It's a, it's a file and print service within, um, within Linux itself. But then you're installing another service. There's a whole other attack surface. There's something else to manage and make sure it's updated. Um, so uh, what I'm suggesting here is we use Notepad++ and a plugin that connects to what we've already got set up. Um, so what I would do now if I were you is go ahead and pause this video download and install Notepad++. It's pretty self-explanatory. I'll put a link in the show notes below um, and then come back and we'll, um, we'll continue. Okay, so hopefully you have installed Notepad++ and there's one thing that we have to do before we can actually uh, go ahead and configure Notepad++. Because we're using certificate-based logon, or I am, so if you're not, you can kind of skip this section, but because we're using certificate-based logon, we need to give Notepad++ a certificate to log on with. And that would be easy except for Notepad++ doesn't use the same format certificate that we're using. Notepad++ only understands the open SSH certificate, not a standard SSH certificate, which is not hard to deal with. So what we're gonna do is go back into um, PuttyGen, right, which is the thing that we use to create our certificate in the first place. So go ahead and open that and um, hit load. And when you hit load, it's gonna bring up your thing, just reload the, the certificate that you made before. And when you do that, because we've put a um, password on it, it will ask you for your um, password to go with it, your, key, your phrase, your key phrase. So go ahead and type that in and you'll see your public key gets loaded. And all we need to do now is go to conversion Export OpenSSH, um, pick a name. I'm just gonna put open in front of the certificate that I had before, and then we're gonna hit save. Now, so now we have two certificates, they're the same certificate, just different formats. Now you can go ahead and close um, PuttyGen, and we're good to go. So open up Notepad++, go into Plugins and Plugin Manager, Show Plugin Manager, it'll load a bunch of uh, plugins that you have options to install. We only really want one. We want um, NPP FTP. So NPPP Notepad++. Um, FTP is the is the client or the plugin. However, it does a lot more than just standard FTP, and we'll we'll go through that in just a second. So go ahead and check that NPP FTP and hit install. It only takes a second, but then it needs to restart Notepad++. So just hit yes. It'll do that. Um, and then restart, no problem, and we're ready to go. When you restart, you should see that there is a new console on the right side of uh, Notepad++, and that's the console we're going to go ahead and configure. If that's not there, just go into plugins, hit NTP, MPP, FTP, and hit show that window, and we're good to go. Okay, so now all we need to do is create a um, profile to use to connect to our Raspberry Pi. So hit the little cog, hit profile settings, and then add new. And we're just gonna call this, I'm gonna call mine Pi Demo. You can call yours whatever you want. Hit okay. Um, the connection type, we want SFTP. That's important because we're using the certificate, right? So it's an encrypted FTP connection 
um, it's going to use port 22, but it, it's it's using SSH as well. So go ahead, HA admin is your username. Leave everything else here. Uh, I'm sorry, the host name 192.167, and then mine is 24. You can put whatever your host IP address or name is. Um, yours is probably 192.168 something. I changed mine. Um, and then the username HA admin for me, it can be whatever yours is for you. Um, go ahead into authentication, unclick password authentication and click try private key file authentication. Our setup doesn't allow us password authentication, so it'd be useless to try it no matter if anything went wrong or not. Um, and then just find the key file that we just made. So mine's OpenSSH. It'll take a second to load into there. Um, I don't know why it takes a second, it just does. Um, and then put in the key phrase so that it can unlock that key for you. And I don't want mine to ask every time, that's personal preference for you. I'm just gonna leave that unchecked and then go ahead and hit close. Uh, easy enough, now the connection icons, the icon all the way to the left, go ahead and click that, pick the profile we just made. It'll take it a second, but then it will actually load um, into your home drive of the user that you just used to connect to. So HA admin in my case, yours could be Pi or whatever else you may, you may want. Once it connects, it may ask you, hey, do you wanna trust the key? Hit yes, it'll actually open up there for you and you're good to go. You're in your, your um, home drive and the home assistant directory is a hidden directory, which is the dot home assistant there. Remember dot is hidden. We created the dot SSH directory earlier. So go ahead in there and the file that we'll spend most of our time with, well, you'll see two files here. So configuration.yaml, um, if you just double click, it'll open it. That's our YAML file. We'll go through how to configure that in another video. Also, the Home Assistant log is there and we'll create a whole bunch of different um, files as we go. And you can see it, it'll make it easier because we can have you know, multiple files and we can just go between the two as we, as we do that and we just hit save and it's ready to go. So I hope you think this is easy. Hope you think this is sort of you know, an easy alternative to Samba, which a lot of people are using. And, and I don't have a problem with if that's what you're comfortable with please do that. I just think that this is, you could use Notepad through Samba as well. I just think having one connection point is a little bit easier. Um, and you can, if you're using multiple Pies and later on we'll be using MQTT servers and things like that, um, we can actually just add new profiles for them and connect to all the different Pies um, that we want and edit files um, all at once. So that's that, easy enough. Uh, share, like, look at the notes below. I'll have step-by-steps. Um, tell your friends, all that stuff that people say. And uh, I'll see you soon. The next video, we're actually gonna go ahead and configure configuration.yaml. And I hope that's exciting to you because we'll add things and we're good to go. So have a good day. Uh, keep automating and until next time, see ya.